Good afternoon. I'd like to talk to you today about Project NEL, a tool for educating neuroscientists for the age of information. My name is Vicki Hertzberg. I'm a statistician and I direct the Center for Data Science at the Nell Hodson Woodruff School of Nursing of Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. I came to the School of Nursing in 2015. And a few months after I got here, there was a story on NPR about medical students at um, NYU using big data sources uh, to better understand healthcare trends. And I thought, if medical students can do this, why not nurses? So today I'm going to talk about why we're doing Project NIL, what it is, what our history is, um, the challenges, the usage to date, and what we see in our future. Well, it seems to not let me advance. In full disclosure, I have part of the ownership of Project NIL intellectual property. In the Center for Data Science, we firmly believe that if you can change nursing, you can change healthcare. And we're all about developing the tools and the talent to help change nursing. Nurses are the largest segment of the healthcare workforce and they spend the most time with patients. And that's why we believe that if we can change nursing, we can change healthcare. And if uh, you want an example, I'll just say Florence Nightingale, a nurse who changed healthcare, also a statistician. So how can we support nurses in changing healthcare? We can help them in implementing evidence-based practices as they accumulate. We can help them develop evidence-based practices where none exists. And we can enable nurses to develop data-driven evidence-based practices. And that's where Project NAIL comes in. Dr. We want, yes? We're actually right. seeing your um, presenter view. Can you hit that swap displays button up there in the left-hand corner? Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. Oh, no worries. Perfect. Thank you so much. It's, it's, my camera's on one screen, my presenter view is on the other. So um, my apologies. Um, so we want to put nurses on the data information knowledge wisdom spectrum, where we're going from data, which is the naming, collecting, and organize of simple measurements of objects, and to information where we organize and interpret them to knowledge, where we would interpret and integrate and understand to wisdom, where we understand we apply. And in nursing, we apply with compassion. This framework was developed by uh, Drs. Pat Patricia Brennan and Sue Bakken. Dr. Brennan is the current director of the National Library of Medicine, and Dr. Bakken is um, the editor-in-chief of the Journal of the American Medical Informatics Association, and both are renowned um, data science, uh, renowned nurse scientists. We want to ask the question, what happens? What should a nurse do when they have a hunch? And that's where Project NEL comes in. Project NEL stands, NEL stands for Nursing Electronic Learning Laboratory. And it's comprised of the uh, de-identified electronic health records taken from our clinical data warehouse for a randomly selected sample of Emory Healthcare patients across the care continuum. So we get both outpatient and inpatient. Um, this was done across four hospitals. We've recently expanded to more hospitals and we'll be getting those in too. Um, we started off in response to this NPR story. Let's get a small data set to help nursing students learn how to use an EHR data set to support their hunches in a clinical setting. And what is that involved? Well, we need to um, get uh, the patients and their demographics, but then we need to uh, categorize all of their encounters with Emory Healthcare. And so every record's indexed by the patient ID, the encounter ID, and those encounters comprise every hospital and clinic visit, the diagnost diagnostic codes, the, the administer medications, procedures, orders, uh, medication and medical history, 
uh, lab values and other uh, test measurements. We started off with 20,000 patients, which in nursing is an incredibly large data set. Uh, we were able to accomplish this easily using an access database with an Oracle backend. And we accomplished this so easily, we thought, well, that was so easy, let's go to 100,000 patients. And uh, that necessitated a change in our backend to PostgreSQL and necess necessitated a change in our front end as well. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And that took a little longer. <clears throat> and then we were challenged to go to a million patients necessitating another change in our backend. And so we're now with the MongoDB NoSQL backend and we've tagged all of our variables to an OMOP standard. And we're really glad we did for another reason I'll talk about in a minute. So we've developed our database and it's now residing on the Amazon cloud. Project Nail today um, is in what I call the version one stage comprised of over a million patients. Um, it's all electronic health records for these patients going back to 2012 up to about 2020. And right now we're adding in the records from 2021 and we'll soon be uh, tackling uh, 2022 as well. But that's got another wrinkle. Uh, the data have been thoroughly cleaned. Um, and there's a data dictionary that we've developed that even Emory Healthcare doesn't have. The, uh, the database also includes clinical notes. Our front end is shiny, hence my presentation here. And it's a shiny app with a series of drop-down menus that uh, allow nurses or other users to uh, select what um, patient populations, what tables they wanna see, and has various blow up points where they can uh, do finer selections. Um, NEL is also um, comprises short courses um, about quantitative tools for large data sources that are available through the Emory Nursing Experience, our continuing education arm as online courses. We've been distributing it to other schools of nursing for use in uh, courses for doctoral students, both PhD and DMP. And we're also developing a series of case studies about its use so that we can um, uh, use it in our curricula at all levels, which will help us uh, when we undergo reaccreditation because we've got new accreditation standards involving uh, increased attention to data and information technology tools. We've got had a few PhD dissertations that have come out of this, uh, uh, a couple dozen DMP quality improvement projects. That's their capstone experience in that program. Um, several uh, students in our BSN honors uh, program have based their thesis on data from Project NEL. And of course, we've had a variety of faculty research projects and presentations that have arisen from using the data available in NEL. Our current challenge is that in October 1st of 2022, Emory Healthcare uh, changed electronic health record vendor from Cerner to Epic. Totally different system. And so we're uh, looking to that to um, uh, change that um, that's being tagged to the OMOP standard so we can hopefully integrate that seamlessly um, into version, into NEL. The operative words being hopefully and seamlessly. Um, we're next looking to incorporate data from Children's Healthcare of Atlanta. Emory Healthcare is exclusively adult and uh, pediatric data is a real missing element, uh, especially for nursing. And so we really want to get that in. And we also want to integrate uh, data from the Grady Health System, that being the public medical system of Fulton and DeKalb counties where Emory is located. Those are both on EPIC. And so it's really critical that we get the integration of Emory Healthcare data into our system right before we go about seeking data from these other sources. With this, 
I'd like to leave you with this thought. When things go wrong, as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill, when the funds are low and the debts are high, and you want to smile, but have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. Life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometimes learns. And many a failure turns about when he might have won if he'd stuck it out. Don't give up though the pace seems slow. You might succeed with another blow. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup. And he learned too late when the night slipped down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of clouds of doubt. And you never can tell how close you are, maybe near when it seems afar. So stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worse, you mustn't quit. And with that, since I'm the only one standing between you and your dinner, I'd like to close and thank you for your attention and ask what questions you have. That was an awesome talk, Dr. Hutchberg. Thank you so much. Um, I think Dr. Higgins had one question um, just around the size of the data, saying that it can end up being larger than RAM data. Um, is there any issue with R? And um, I was just wondering as well, I'm guessing you guys maybe have like a posit connect instance. I know that you're it's in the cloud, so you haven't had any issues with that. We haven't had any issues that I know of, but then I am, I mean, that's um I I don't get down in the weeds with this that's why i have a team that does this so um so i'm sure it probably does but not at this point um there's a question about omop um supposedly the omop mapping should help with the ehr change because instead of going you know variable a over here to variable c over here it's going label to label, label here, label there, put them together. And uh, that's my understanding of it at a very simplistic level. We'll really see what happens uh, when we start to tackle that. Um, we've recently introduced clinical notes into this, which is a really valuable resource. And um, that took a long time to happen. Uh, it's been a real process because it has to be de-identified. Um, uh, even though the records are de-identified, you know, then there's still stuff that pops up in notes that is identifiable. So we had to de-identify that, but then we had to make sure that it's not over-redacted because there are things like Walker or uh, Simpson forceps that, um, might be considered identical that identical dia, data, but they're actually medical terms as well. Yeah. Do you guys have like a natural language natural processing language team process. that's helping with that, or how are you guys attacking that? Um, that's a, being done by an entirely different group at our institution, um, and so uh, we just um, there's a there's a lot of politics involved in this because we're outside of what's considered the covered entity. And so we have to go to um, uh, the trusted whatever, and they do all of that for us. And then we get the data. And then, you know, we started this in 2017. And uh, by 2018, 2019 was when we got the challenge to go to a million. And it hasn't been until recently that we've really, maybe the last year, um, that we've really gotten to that million because of first it was the pandemic and the same team had to build all of these dashboards and everything. And then then we then the same team got charged with the um, epic conversion. So it's been uh, a real journey. Yep. I bet. 
Okay. <clears throat> well, thank you so much. And I think I see any other questions. We really appreciate that. That was a great talk.